Warning, the following content may contain spoilers for film and television programs. It is also intended for mature audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. going to do very well moving forward you don't think so no wait well, you said you already heard about no oh number four yeah yeah i was pretty I've, crazy after watching batman v superman in like a hate filled the court case. moment of aggression i like pursued any knowledge about the movies to come i was and really excited about suicide squad until i read that but uh since we are recording i'm not gonna say what the news Excuse me, say what the news is until we get there. So. Do you remember how I said I was iffy about both of these movies? Yeah, you were right. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm not right about Suicide Squad. Yeah. I really want Suicide Squad to do well. So that's the one where like there are just a bunch of superheroes. Super villains. Yes, yeah, super, super villains. villains and uh, centered around so. Harley Quinn, who isn't super at all. She just has a vagina. Yeah, that's cool. She's but crazy hot. Do they all kill, yeah. like they just line up and kill themselves and then that's the end of the movie? No. Yeah. Did you I, guys know yeah. that's what the title implies? Yeah, okay, I know, so right? you guys know the MASH theme song, right? Do, 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 I have heard it. Do you guys know the actual name of that song? Nope. Suicide is Painless. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. I don't think that's probably true, though. I'm sure there's a lot of From ways to actually, do that. Depending that, on how you do it, especially. Yeah. Like, Suicide by Bear, I'm sure, is going to be painful. Is that a thing, though, or is that... Um, suicide by Cop is a thing, so I, I think, think Suicide by Bear. bear aside. Did you know that there was... <laughs> I was watching YouTube. I think you were the one that showed me this. There's a guy, he, like, jumps out of helicopters and, like, body spears sharks in the middle of the ocean. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's go ahead and make a list of the safest hobbies. He actually knocks them out with his iron balls. Yeah, they're like right to the eyes. Yeah. There's nothing they can do. What the fuck? Is this a real thing? Yeah. The, not the iron balls thing. Well, yes, there is a guy that jumps out a sword, of- which he can somehow swing super fast in water. He yes. just cuts their heads off. Well, you I know, like you know the water dynamics, you know, you just got to go like. Hollows out their heads, eats all the brains, puts it on his head, wears it as a hat. Yes. I love everything Stylish. about this story, yeah. even though I'm pretty sure it's bullshit. Is the he, only true part, I will tell you this right now, the only true part is there is a guy that jumps out of helicopters and body spear sharks. His name is Bruce Payne, and he goes by the superhero moniker Sharkman. Sharkman. I love it. Love everything yeah. about it. Can yes. we print it now? So, Sharkman <clears throat> v. Dollman. Yeah. That's, you know, Dollman. Dollman. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> Dollman. Or a, li- a little closer. There we I, we go. need it to be slightly more inside you. All right. Well, we can fix this. Story of my life. Wait. Wait, no. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> uh, it kind of backfired. Yeah. Too bad this is all going in. This is going to be episode 73, I think. Mm, the worst episode yet. Good job, guys. Yeah. We're off to a blazing... Or wait, are we are we keeping this? Yeah, we're keeping all of okay. this. As soon as I hit the record button, all this stuff stays in. So we are this. revving do- the engine, and there's a wall 10 feet in front of us. I'm going to do something really weird. You guys won't even understand it. Okay, go for it. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah let's yeah. do it. Hello, all you flick freaks out there. Ah! What is going on? My name is not Andrew. Episode 73. This is episode 73. <laughs> hey, Andrew. Hi. Say your name. <laughs> uh, I'll be your captain on this venture. My name is Andrew Ormsby, joined as always by the wrong half of Hollywood, a.k.a. the perpetual wizard, Jareth Mooneyham. Howdy. And our new apparent host in this, a.k.a. the king of the doldrums, uh, I've, Brian Vaughn. I've already backed out on hosting. I felt I didn't like it. <laughs> you you're, do so you're back well. In the seat. <laughs> you and Van do a great job on both. Yeah, we, the, we uh, always trade off catch- duties on the, on the hosting week to week, um, largely based on mood. Uh, the color of the mood rings that we're wearing. Ah, mainly. Those things are pure magic. They are. Yeah. They actually, like, I got them from uh, Warwick Davis after he was in Willow, <laughs> and they were wonders. Wait, did they actually have mood rings in I don't Willow? think so, but there was magic. Yeah. 
That it was, was a Ron magic. Howard movie. Did you know that? I do know that, but I didn't know that until fairly recently for some reason. <laughs> I never knew that. Yeah, that's a Ron Howard movie I starring still, Val Kilmer still and don't Warwick know it. Davis. It's definitely on the bottom end of the Ron Howard spectrum. Depending on how you look at the spectrum. I don't yes. know. I like Willow. I do too. It's a great movie um, where they fight that giant Hydra that has two heads that look like turds. Yeah. I watched, they do look like turds. I watched <laughs> Willow maybe five years ago again after not having seen it since Please I was Please tell a kid. me it holds up. Uh, In the sense that I, the way I want it, it to hold up. It probably holds up the way you want to. There are large uninterrupted, like boring sections of it, but then the, the, the action scenes or the scenes where he's meeting people just batshit crazy. Like, I don't really understand how they thought that was going to be a successful. I remember where he like, I remember the only scene, one of the scenes I remember besides like the brownies, you know, like the little itty bitty people, yeah, which were amazing, yeah. was whenever uh, Willow walks into a brothel and he sees Val Kilmer dressed up as a woman because <laughs> he has to hide from a uh, Glug, I think the guy's name was. Yeah. Yeah. He has to hide from Glug because Kilmer was banging Glug's wife. Yeah. Val Kilmer was dirty. Also, to dress up as a woman, he wouldn't even have to change his name because Val, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Valerie. Yeah. Valencia. What is that short for if you're a man? I think his Valiant. name is just Val. Valtrex? I th no, I think his name is just <laughs> Val. Like, I think he Val. added the Kilmer later. I think he was born that, like yeah, Cher. Kilmer like can't Seal? be a real name. So what? did Seal have lupus? Is that why his face I'm is taking, like that? I don't know, honestly. I don't know. Maybe I was but just I watching recently... House, and that's why. Because everybody in House had lupus. It's because lupus is like the go-to, we don't know what the fuck is wrong with you disease. Yeah, autoimmune. Oh, it basically it. just does whatever to you, and then everybody's like, uh. Lupus. I just recently found out that um, that Seal and Heidi Klum are divorced. Oh, you didn't know that? No. I didn't really know sad. they were married. Val they Kilmer were. is Val Kilmer's real name. Yeah. Name I, I wasn't. Val Edward Kilmer. He was born December 31st, 1959. He was almost a New Year's baby. Yeah, go for it. If you could bring me a green tea as well. Okay, then fine. Val Kilmer will be 57 years old this year. Is he still fat? Uh, I don't know. In this picture, <laughs> in this picture, his head's very square. I don't he, know he necessarily. Got, he got fat. crazy fat. He did for a while. Yeah. I hope the best for him. I like Val Kilmer. He was Doc Holliday. Yeah, he was also, I recently rewatched uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh, that movie's really it was, good. It was really good. Yeah. It, was that the first time you'd seen it? Well, the second. Okay. Yeah. But it had been a little while. Yeah. Um, so guys, I'm going to let you decide what the, did you see that opinion of the week is, unless you guys have one. Okay. Well, what did you guys watch like this week? So they f wrapped up both of these series, 11, 22, 63 ended, which means I can watch it now. The people vs. OJ ended, <laughs> which means I can watch it now. And walking dead season six. Ended. I watched that. I also recently saw two things you already did. Did you see that opinion of the week on? Yeah. Do you want to give your... Why don't you give your opinion on a Batman v Superman? Oh, it's going to be Dawn scathing. Go for it. You, do you want to rage rant or do you want to do a review? In the, All if, he can do is sigh. If I do a review, I have to bring up the positive aspects of it. Yes. Which fuel the negative aspects, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, that's fine. <sighs> I mean, okay. I haven't seen it, so... So, let me start... If you spoil it, I really don't care. No, yeah, this is spoiler-free. <laughs> yeah. That's the way we do this. Yeah. Well, that's how we've always done it before, but I've been gone for like a month. I don't know what happens. Welcome back. Yeah, hey. It's good to be good to be here. Get out of here. Did you know Michael's having a baby? Yeah. I came back to find out that and many things. And well, I moved every out. Every time I go anywhere for any extended period of People time... People have babies. I come back and some weird shit's going on. Yeah. Like, I came back and uh, there were like... I don't know, not directly where I work, but there were two new people at my job and like somebody else quit. And then uh, like uh, my hours one day had to change and there and apparently Mike's having a baby. And also uh, apparently Batman versus Superman was awful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, man. Even yeah, I didn't was. like it. And yeah. you know how much I was like hoping. That yeah. Would be give good. trying to want wanting it to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I so, took issue with the fact that uh, Shark Man wasn't in this. He is for... I mean, King Shark? Two no, and a half Shark seconds. <laughs> you know, the guy that wears the shark's heads. As oh, oh, that, that guy. guy. Call yeah. back! Yeah. yeah. From I, like five minutes ago. I want that to be a thing, yeah. all of that. All right, Jareth, take it away. All right, so I went into this movie. Uh, I was iffy 
to begin with. That's on the record. I know you didn't want to see it because you hated Man of Steel, like yeah. loathed that I movie. I despise that movie. This would uh, typically be the part where I bring up the IHOP thing again. I'm not going to. Yeah, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I, I went into this movie. I was kind of forced to watch it because it's going to be... <laughs> Our topic tomorrow night on spoiler cast, I guess, and I now live with the showrunner of spoiler cast, so I have no excuse. I can't get out of it. Yeah. So I go and I watch it, and this movie runs like somebody telling you about this movie. Oh, that sounds terrible. Uh, so if I were to be describing this movie to you scene by scene, I would probably jump around a lot to tell you about these other characters or things I remembered. That is what this movie is the entire way through. And it's like eight hours long, right? It's like, like 245. 245, yeah. yeah. Uh, Still very long. Yeah. The earlier on in the movie you are, the jerkier and less connected everything is. Things get more connected towards the end, but by then, I kind of was You're forced exhausted. Not, I was exhausted, and I didn't care yeah. about anything. <laughs> yeah. Because none of the characters had kind of been given enough time. Uh, the The directing was bad. It was tr- <sighs> atrocious. Zack uh, Snyder does need to be fired moving forward with DCU. He needs to be slapped repeatedly. Like, really, really hard. Weirdly, I don't think he's necessarily wrong for that job. But maybe if they gave him, like, a uh, someone to rein him in. You know, a yeah. handler. I think that he has he surrounds himself with yes men. If he wants Probably. to do something, he's like, "What are you guessing?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, like yeah. Sucker Punch is a movie that exists. Yeah, um, is that Zack Snyder also? Yeah, yeah I yeah. guess it has his aesthetic all over it. I think Watchmen, maybe the which I really like. I, uh, I, I'm in the vast minority there. Yeah, with Watchmen. Yeah. Watchmen's awesome. Yeah, I did not like Watchmen at all. Yeah, I I mean, and like generally speaking, I think people it was poorly received. I thought really. I I also thought it was. But awesome. I will say yeah. this: go I think that Batman v Superman will go down as Snyder's worst movie. I think that's fair. I mean, I already mentioned Sucker Punch, but no, no. What Where's about it? hold on? <laughs> the the what about Legend of Owl Town or whatever? You know, oh, that animated yeah. Legend of Owl Town. No, it's, um, it's it's about like animated owls flying around. Yeah, for some like, reason he directed that. Yeah, he didn't. What? Do, yeah, <laughs> the guy who did three hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so think about animated okay, here, owls. Here's, called... here's some positives. It's it's really weird. It's not. Le- it's like Legends of Pandar. Yeah, no, that's World Legend Warcraft. of the Guardians. Legends the owls of, of Gahul. Yeah, Gahul. Oh, that's actually, sort of, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, yeah that was a stupid movie. But uh, yeah, that was okay, weird. talking about positives in this movie, <laughs> how were some of the people's performances? Well, by and large, many of the performances were very good. Uh, some of them were really, really bad. I'm not going to name any names, but you know who you fucking I mean, you are. Eisenberg. Yeah. You can totally name names. Yeah, a- actually, even his performance wasn't bad. It's just he was given a really shitty character to play. Yeah. Uh, Eisenberg is like the exact opposite of what people expect when they look at Lex Luthor. Also, what they wrote was the exact opposite of what anyone expects when they want a good character. Yeah. Um, Ben Affleck was fucking stellar. God, he was so good. Uh, and from what I'm hearing, they're going to be focusing a little bit more on him moving forward. Yeah. He's because going, of... He's going to direct... And star in an R-rated Batman movie. Yeah, which I'm I'm down for. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Just hopefully he doesn't kill as many people. Well, I mean, now that never mind. Not saying nothing. You got to do what you got to do. You know. Yeah. It's just like in Man of Steel when Superman had to destroy that IHOP for the good of the town. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> most of the people that died at the hands of Superman died in the ins or er, Batman. Died in the incidental way that Batman is always killing people. Like he's blowing up the car they're in because he's shooting them with a cannon from a jet. Yeah. He's always doing that. And that car always explodes. And we're like, yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> he never kills anybody. That's his whole thing. I, I know he's not Isn't supposed that, to. Like, but... most people's whole thing? Like, I don't do it either. No, but you know, from yeah, like, I know right? okay, I think that's what really <laughs> separates the DC universe None from the Marvel universe. Yeah. Marvel, they kill everybody. Yeah. Spider Man doesn't. 
Yeah, but um, as like a general rule, just like I think Batman, he's like one of the few Marvel characters. Have you guys thought Wolverine, about how ineffective Spider Man would be if he lived in a rural area? Like he can't even. <laughs> okay, so he just he have can't to get run. anywhere. Yeah. So I wrote get a, a car. So yeah, what do you guys think of this? I wrote a script a long time ago. <laughs> I just don't have the budget to actually film this. I had a script where it followed around a uh, a city worker whose job was to clean up all the webs left behind from Spider Man. Yeah, that he's guy. just jizzed all over the that fucking he's windows. Jizzed yeah, all over the windows, jizz, basically. Where's it? it's coming out of? What his wrist or something? Uh, it's like a little. He, it's a container. Yeah, it's a container it's a he has on his rocket wrist. spray thingy. Mm, yeah, that's gross. Kind of like uh, that stuff you like. Spray. It's like silly string. Yeah, couldn't think of what that was. Called. I mean, high intensity I I silly you were string. Say, like sticky jizz or something. Kind of like uh, you know <laughs> semen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Basically, like silly silly string. It's like yours. Is not like silly call, string. Is that what you call your jizz? Silly yeah. yeah. String? Dicks on. I put it all over. I every, it's festive. I put it all over everybody's like yeah. furniture. Right, oh no! I need to. I need to <laughs> clean. Yeah, it's like the end of that happiness movie. Did anyone <laughs> see that? What? Like uh, Twenty years ago. What happiness? It's like a. Who who did that movie? <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, well, you're thinking about that. I think what Philip Seymour you... Hoffman's in it. Uh, it's called Happiness. Anyway, I remember it's there was a movie kind of like movie. that had Simon Pegg in it. Yeah. No. Uh, the that's um the secret to happiness or something. Secret like that. to happiness. Okay. I'm thinking of Mission good. Impossible Four. Yes, which was good. It was good. <clears throat> okay, so what did you think of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman? The Character was underutilized, but she was excellent. Yeah. She was a fantastic pick, and she's fucking gorgeous. God, yeah. Um, but I think that my um my biggest complaint about the movie is that there is a very obvious good movie in there. Like, this movie is a train wreck, but not like the train was put together and then it wrecked into something else. It was... A series of train cars that they put in erect position, and then we're like, "This is a train." <laughs> uh, the longest train-based metaphor ever to be on this podcast, I think. I could go longer. Yeah, set that record pretty high. Yeah, so. make it unbreakable. Uh, no, no, I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna do it. Um, so I, I want to be able to beat it later and be excited about it. But okay, so Wait, would you can actually we use that audio excerpt? <laughs> yeah, you want to beat it later. I want to beat it later and be excited about it. <laughs> can I just? I, I want to beat it later yeah. and be excited about it. There we go. So, I mean, if we're gonna keep that audio like I as don't a sound want some bite, lackluster beating. <laughs> Here, here's a really important question for you. Do you think people should go and see this movie? Uh, shit. Um, well, obviously they're moving with the DC movie universe thing. So you're probably going to have to if you want to keep watching these movies, but frankly, no, I don't think you should. I I don't even think it's very worthwhile as a uh, popcorn beat-em-up flick. Yeah, that's what I've heard from a lot of people. Actually, Uh, I'm going to disagree on that. I think there's a difference, and I know this is what you're saying, and you're right. There is a difference between an entertaining movie and a good movie. I still thought that this movie was entertaining i thought some of the fight choreography was really cool especially batman taking on the the gang of thugs at the very end of the movie i thought that was amazing the actual fight between batman and superman was fucking terrible it was they both looked like they were super heavy and just like lurching towards each other because they both weigh they look like they weighed a thousand pounds and they're just dragging themselves oh, to each other to be fair batman is wearing like a metal suit we don't know how heavy that is yeah well i know but like you expect <clears throat> swiftness from batman yeah and he was just the exact opposite of that right there yeah, yeah. After, after he got trained by liam neeson he became very quiet and swift light on his feet yeah i actually do like this batman Especially the suit a lot more than Chris Nolan's Batman. What about uh, George Clooney's Batman? Better than Clooney's... I will say this. Ben Affleck is the best live-action Batman we've ever had. Weirdly easily. And I was very... Like, whenever I heard about this forever ago, I was like, Ben Affleck. Yeah. But now I'm like, okay, Ben Affleck. I didn't really mind the decision out of the gate. I mean, because, I mean, he's shown the ability to rise to the occasion. Like Argo and a... The town. The town, the town which... 
The it's town such is such a flawed movie, but all of the acting in it is awesome. I really like it. I'm, I'm just, I it no, I like I'm it a, too. It may be that I'm a sucker for heist films. The town is it's the bank robbery movie where Boston. they repeatedly have yeah. to tell you they're in Boston in a particular section of Boston. Southie, right? yeah, so yeah, whatever. You know, Chowder. <clears throat> they say it like Southie Red Chowder, every, old Southie Chowderville. Yeah. Every third <laughs> sentence is they're. They're in the town. In it's boss, boss, boss. And the socks ain't gonna and win yet, tonight. It, and yet, I don't think they say cork sucker even once. Mm. Uh, that's the that's a mistake because in the Departed, Alec Baldwin gets off a fine one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. They even get one a couple of them off in fucking uh, Boston, Black Mass. Boston the movie. Black Mass was <laughs> yeah just riddled with fun Bostonisms. Yeah, the town also and people has... that don't look like humans. Yeah. What the fuck? The town also has what is totally the best Jeremy Renner uh, performance. I don't know. Career. I really He's so think good in that he okay. He that's probably oh, his the second town, best. The movie. Gotcha. Well, I mean okay. the Hurt Locker. I Hurt thought Locker, you meant Boston. I honestly do think that Jeremy Renner in the Hurt Locker that's his best performance. No, he's really good in that. And you know, I was watching an episode of House the other day. He was a patient. I think that was like one of his first acting that's roles. Really weird. Wait, uh, is Jeremy Renner Grumpy Cat? Yes. Okay. What? He plays. That's little, his default facial. Kind of looks like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant like he he played like in an animated the film. Secret's he was like, <laughs> the no, secret's out. No, he just actually is Grumpy, grumpy Cat. Cat. Okay. Uh, Hack Eye. Yeah, Hack Hawkeye. Yeah, Hack Eye. <laughs> his superpower is he's real good at shooting arrows. Hack he's, he's really good at it. He is though, and he's got a family. Did you guys know that? Yeah. <laughs> they make in, a point on of a barn. it. Barn. <laughs> family in a barn. Okay, so on I think a it's farm, not a barn. They got a barn, and I'm sure you know same when, thing. I don't know. They in every had single, a barn. In every single movie, whenever shit gets real and the enemies are they coming, go to a farm. They always go to no, no. Like if you're on a farm yeah. and shit gets real, you don't run into the house where it's probably a lot safer. You yeah. always run to the barn where it's just like giant air, and then you know sharp, sharp implements. Yeah, shanty around you. It could be but, like a witness with Harrison Ford, and there's just a shitload of barns to run to. Or, I mean, <laughs> you could. Al- there's also hay in barns that you could fall dramatically into and survive. Like an eagle. What yeah. if you landed on that needle, the one needle that's there? Then you die. Mm. But heroes never fall on that one needle. No. <laughs> I was. I think there was an episode of Mythbusters where they tried to see if, like, the uh, the Assassin's Creed, you know, the eagle dive, if that was actually viable. And apparently he, like, would have been, he would have exploded on impact. Yeah, no, he'd be totally dead. Yeah. Thus ending the game. Yeah. I, I think that that did not yeah. need myth busting. Yeah. No, we probably, know that really not. high heights well, equal dying. Well, the, the two ones that they were doing were <clears throat> that one, and they were also doing Temple of Doom, you know, whenever Indiana Jones and... uh. Was it high top or what? What was the kid's short name? round? Short, short round. round. High top. High, high top, top. Short round. <laughs> it's not short round. Oh, it's the Dawns. But yeah, it was him and short round. You know, they like they were falling through the canopies. You know, yeah, they would have died too. Apparently. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. But um, again, probably doesn't need myth busting. Yeah. No. Are we ready to move on to the news segment? Yeah. Sorry that took so long. No, honestly, it was great. Okay, just real quick. So we had the other ones. Eleven twenty two six three was fucking astounding. The ending of that is like one of the best endings for yep. a miniseries ever. I'm gonna definitely be watching that. People v OJ Simpson. We all know how that one ends. Actually, OJ he guilty. gets off. Yes, he gets uh, off. OJ is guilty, and he leads a life behind bars. Yes. And uh, what was the other one I mentioned? Oh, Walking Dead. I yeah. love that ending. A lot of people hated that ending. I thought it was fantastic. So I have okay. I d- I liked the episode fine. I don't. I think the ri- I don't have a huge problem with anything, but I do. I think the right move is not to cop out ending. Yeah, like show it. Yeah, end there. Exact same story. Exact same everything. Just show what's happening. I don't understand why I I get why people are upset, but I think people are, I don't understand why people are surprised that there's a cliffhanger oh, ending not, for a series I'm because not, every single series ever le- ends on a cliffhanger on the end of the season. Yeah, I'm not um usually not that vague though. Like uh I'm uh I guess what I'm saying is if you're the Walking Dead, you don't need to tease out your next season. You have a built-in audience that's enormous. And that I totally agree with. So that's yeah. at that point, I mean, give us some fan service. Also the shock value or like the emotional impact of 
showing uh, Negan do a thing with a baseball bat and then seeing it play out and then just cut to black, that'd be pretty badass. Yeah. Who I'm do you think saying. got it? Abraham. I really hope it's not Abraham. That's what that's what I'm thinking right now. I but am too. I, I mean, it's... Well, there were too many little moments where he's like, maybe I could have a kid. <laughs> yeah. The the love so, triangle uh, between him, uh, Rosita, and Sasha. Why does everyone want to fuck Abraham? Does anyone understand? I want to fuck I Abraham. I want to fuck Abraham. I don't know who I Abraham is. I haven't watched it. Have you Abraham seen that Lincoln? guy's Fu Manchu, that ginger chew? Mm-hmm. And he says things like bitch nuts. He and he's adorable. Like bitch nuts and something about shit creek and drowning in poop or something. I don't know. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Oh, I saw 10 Cloverfield Lane. What'd you think? That movie was fucking stellar. I I'm think seeing that's that still, this week. That's uh, still my probably. number one movie you of the year. You will like it. Yeah. I think I will. I'm, all all signs point to the fact that I'll like it. I really do think that's John Goodman's best performance, even better than like Big Lebowski and all of his other movies. Does it, what about the air conditioning repair guy in Community? Because he's so good. <laughs> this yeah. is room temperature. Uh, this is the room. Do you feel that? No. I exactly. Can't, <laughs> I can't tell where my body ends and the room begins. <laughs> What about um <laughs> hey is there a, <laughs> is there a place where it's possible to see that Michael Shannon movie where his kids got super eyes? What? You know, oh, the one special yeah. or whatever. Where his kid has laser eyes and blows up the world and the oh, army oh, wants him. That's um Midnight Special. Yeah, I think it's that, not out yet. I think it is. Is it? Like limited release. I thought it came out in May. I think it's limited release out, but we don't have it here yet. No. I we could like probably to... check it like the Moxie and yeah, see if they can get it for us. I would like to see that. Yeah. We've been teasing getting to the news segment for a while, so I'm just gonna jump right into it now. Now that All you guys right. are good and ready. Yeah. So Telltale, this is the first news item. We have four or five this week, sorry. So the first news item is Telltale, the game developer, has announced that their newest game is going to be a Batman Bruce Wayne series. And it's also going to have the debut of their new game engine. This is video game news I can get behind. And I'm Telltale sure is great. I love them. <clears throat> and I'm sure it's going to be roughly the same gameplay as every other game they've made. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be the exact same, like, you know, story-driven... Yeah, choose uh, your own adventure, Choose your guys. own adventure. And I really like that it's a upgraded version of their game engine because it's really glitchy and it's needed to be upgraded for a very long time. Yeah, I played Wolf Among Us last year. That's, I think that's still my favorite Telltale game. It is mine so far, and uh, it was great. I had no glitchiness or anything. Yeah. I also played it on a PS4, though, not on... PC. I've never played it on PC or mobile. I've played or... The Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, I played. I played PC. Walking Dead season one on PC, and that. Yeah. God damn, that one was awesome. Yeah, it's really. That's good. such an emotional roller coaster, especially that last episode of season Fuck. one. I think that's one of the few times oh, I the things I one almost, must do. I think I almost cried, or I did cry at the end of season one. I got misty eyed. Yeah. I totally, when I played Wolf Among Us, just to get in the noir mood, I totally just had some scotch and a glass. You know, yeah, just, put on a fedora. Yeah, it was fun. Have, Turn the lights off. Have a daintily tied skinny tie, like, around your, yeah. where your nipples are. Like, it was yeah. so low. I poured dirt all around uh, my house just to get the right griminess. I really hope they do a season two of that. I hope they do. I really do. That would be great. They haven't said if they will or not. Honestly, that's, I honestly think that's their best one. But... Getting have back you played to the Game of Thrones ones, I have not yet. I haven't. I just I'm done with Game of Thrones. Really, I'm done. I'll with watch it the until show. The, uh, book comes out, and then I'll I'll read that. I did see a snippet of like what's going to be like happening in the first episode, and if the first episode doesn't like win me over, I'm just going to wait for all of them to come out, and then I'll just binge watch them. Because yeah, I'm going to try to stay off the internet and just wait for a book at this point if yeah. that's yep. possible. That's my plan. I mean, we're like probably like 20 years out, but. Yeah, at least. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Thankfully, he has youth serum. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. So, with this Batman Superman game, it's going to be more so on the detective side of Batman. Fuck yeah. Which, you know, we haven't really... It's going to be a lot of... They say it's going to be a lot of Bruce Wayne searching for clues in, you know, you know he has to still keep up the Bruce Wayne persona, but at the same time, he has to try and get away with like sneaking away to do stuff. It's not going to be... Because Batman can get away with anything. Yeah. I think yeah, if you're actually Bruce it. Wayne, it makes it a lot more challenging. Oh, yeah. And if you're me and you're really into puzzle games and detective-y stuff, but you don't give a shit about fighting games, then that's perfect. 
Mm-hmm. Thank that you does, for listening to all my letters, Telltale. That does sound like the best way they could take it yeah. easily. All right, so I'm totally on board for that game. Number two on the news, we have a reputable source stating that the next Call of Duty game coming out this year will take place in the very, very far future. They're quoted as saying this new Call of Duty game will make Black Ops 3 look like it took place in the Stone Age. We're talking about space battles here. So we're getting uh, Destiny of Duty. What is this reputable source and why is it capitalized? I think it was Kotaku. Oh, okay. I think that's who it was. Kotaku. It's a guy Andrew <clears throat> ran into the other day. <laughs> Just some guy. <laughs> well, Kotaku's like the <clears throat> breaking news for video games. That's where like I'll either go there or IGN to check out like what's happening. Yeah, no, they're they're doing I, really pretty I good. I pretty much for my news wait until we do the podcast and then the, uh, that's, and then we that's inform items. you of the that's, five most important things. Yeah, I get a lot of my news here too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Probably pretty, bad, but follow us on Twitter because, like, we only Twitter. pick like the highlights to do in the news segment. But, I like, do I'm, follow I'm, us. I'm on typically Twitter. like pretty. I do too. I'm pretty up to date on like all uh, other media stuff, but video games, I never have any idea. Sometimes there'll be a game I really like that came out like a year ago. I'm like, shit, I wanted to get that or something. Like, uh, did you guys know that Merle Haggard died a couple days? I ago? did know that he was actually yeah. supposed wow. to perform here, like a couple blocks away, in a few hours. Bummer. It's probably, you know, he died on his birthday. Did he? Probably like wrestling a horse or something. Merle Haggard was kind of a badass. Not kind of. He just was a badass. And then uh, who played... Uh, what's the name of the girl who played... Um, oh, God fucking damn it. Uh, Patty Duke. She played uh, Helen Keller. Oh. Yeah, she died a couple days ago, too. Yeah, I saw that as well. Helen, or Miracle Worker, not a bad movie. It's all right. She was only 69. I think she's in the Guinness Book of World Records as the youngest person to ever win an Oscar. Hmm. How? Yeah, because she was like 10 or something. She was something like that, yeah. And we just got to wait until like super famous people make a baby and then put that baby in a movie they direct and then that baby wins an Oscar by default. That's not how it works. Because we had some challengers. That is how it works. Challengers did that, like that. Uh, a Beast of Southern Beast Wild. Beast of Southern Wild, Kavenzene Wallace or something She like was that? fucking good. Yeah, and then really actually, uh, I forget the name of the girl, but Jared Little Ju- Miss Sunshine. Yeah. Abigail... Breslin? Uh, no, is that the same girl? Is it? I think so. It might be. Okay. But yeah, Steinfeld, she was, but she was older. From True oh Red. yeah, from True she was Grit. Like Thirteen or something. Yeah. So, uh, getting back to Call of Duty, that's where we definitely need the uh, the how the hell we wind up like this soundbite right there. Yep. But um, well, I mean, I I think that this is a uh, good. Uh, the very very far unbelievable future is a good place for shooters. Because they tend to have unbelievable mechanics. Uh, and this allows them freedom to maximize those mechanics. Because, uh, I mean, Call of Duty's like, yeah, you know, sure, I'll just sh- stab you with this needle and you're good to go. Don't matter how many gunshot wounds you have. That doesn't work ever. It, like, epinephrine's good, but it's not a miracle drug. Uh now they can just be like, it's a future needle. Yeah. <laughs> you've been future resurrected. Let's do this. Congratulations. You've been futured. That part makes sense. I just don't understand why they want to compete with games like Destiny or Halo or Titanfall. Uh, why don't you go why back not, to why right? don't you go back well, to World War II when your games were fucking phenomenal? Uh well actually Destiny's Battlefield, awful. <laughs> Battle yeah, <laughs> Destiny's awful. Destiny's awful and Titanfall didn't wasn't all that critically well received. I love Titanfall. I loved it too, except for that it had like no support for it. Yeah. The uh, Titanfall 2 coming out, I think it's at the end of this year, is going to have like a full campaign. Well, full, is it going to have actual server support and stuff? Yeah. Because like the last one, it was like two weeks in and there's like, yeah, we're not updating this anymore. Peace. <laughs> Although they did give everybody all free DLC, which was great. Yeah. But uh, I I because th- Battlefield is going back to World War One actually trench warfare from what I'm reading, and uh, I think that Call of Duty needs to follow suit and go back to World War Two because because Medal of Honor's not around anymore, you know. Yeah, it kind of had its last hurrah there, trying to go to Afghanistan. 
Oh yeah, the uh, the the modern uh, Medal of Honor one that they did. That's right. Yeah, that, like really did not do well at all. Not at all. I just remember the guy on the cover had a giant beard. Yep. Yeah. I think that that was their selling point. Was giant look at beard. his beard. The giant beard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in general, I think Battlefield's probably better than Call of Duty. Anyway, I've so. never played a Battlefield game ever. They're pretty fun. Are they? <laughs> So, moving on to the third news item, Ryan Gosling, Robin Wright, and Dave Bautista have joined Harrison Ford on his return to Blade Runner 2. I still can't believe that's a thing that's happening. <laughs> it is a thing. Uh, I think Ridley Scott's going to be doing this one again, but he's been hit and miss lately. That's true. I mean, the Martian, doing... w- the Martian was amazing, but uh, Elysium... Elysium was garbage, and yeah. I really I went into that like excited to see it too. Me too. And I, I, I just wait, was know. that Ridley Scott? Yeah, I'm not sure. But I thought that uh, who was the director? Was it Ridley Scott? It was of Elysium, or wait, no, not Elysium. What am I thinking? Uh, Prometheus. I'm thinking Prometheus. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it was Blomkamp who did Elysium. Yeah, because yeah. everything was dusty South Africa world. Yeah, that's, I'm. I was thinking <clears throat> Prometheus. Speaking of a Blomkamp, though, his um. Alien movie is coming out next year. Is it going to be set in dusty South Africa world? Probably. Is it going to be better than Johannesburg? Shabby? But it's going to be like in a spaceship. Yeah. I think the spaceship's going to be all holograms of South Africa. Yeah, because, you know, that's what everybody wants. To be fair, I liked Prometheus way more than I liked Elysium. Elysium was awful. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I meant, yeah, I meant Prometheus, everybody. Sorry. But yeah, I didn't like Prometheus, like, at all. Uh it just I have mixed there. feelings about it. And sure as shit, no answers were given, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Which was bullshit that that was their selling point. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm all down for this cast. Ryan Gosling, Robin Wright. Dave Bautista actually turned out to be a decent actor. He was really good in Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, I thought that his henchman role was, like, one of the good things in Spectre. Other than that, that movie was just shit. One yeah, of my no, least, one of my <clears throat> least favorite Bond films. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It was just kind of over bloated, and uh, yeah. I, I really wanted to like it. I haven't seen that one, but his role in Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of a light role. I mean, as far as acting goes, yeah, it was very uh, light and not a lot to do, and pretty comedic. The I mean, whole movie was light and comedic. Things. No, I mean, he just had to like kind of just be. He had a couple of lines. <laughs> I and like he, your knife, I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah, he just had to kind of be flat. That's all he had to do. Yeah. He also won the Royal Rumble in 2014. I just Good uh, for him. Okay, Googled so... to confirm that. I, lo- I loved your uh, WrestleMania <laughs> 32. <laughs> yeah, we had an hour and a half long uh, WrestleMania podcast. Yeah. That it sounds like fun. It was pretty awesome. What do you think of John Cena on, coming to the Rocks on, like, rescue? On, like, no sleep, also. Ba, ba, da, ba. Yeah, and then he ba, had his ba, towel... Ba. He didn't have time to make a big production out of himself, though. He had to get down there. Yeah, he had to save the rock. He was there were trouble. hillbillies in there. <laughs> <laughs> he had to do something. Everybody knows that you send John Cena to the rescue when the hillbillies yep. invade. Or, like, if there's a problem abroad. You yeah. You know, you send John Cena, it gets taken care of. Problem with abroad? Yes. That, too. You know what? I was thinking about this the other day, and you guys are probably going to laugh at me. I think that John Cena would be a great Shazam. That sounds great. I've seen the... the yeah, yeah, no. I've. He would be a great Shazam because they've already cast The Rock as a, a Black Adam. Yeah. So. so, and then what can we find for Batista to do? But, no, I'm not, I'm not going to make that joke. Can we find a role for Stone Cold Steve Austin in there somewhere? Let um, me tell you your son. <laughs> There's got to be something for him to do. What? That'd be what? one of the things he did. <laughs> what? And then uh, just generally interrupt people and wear jean shorts. Do you guys have a favorite wrestler? I know we're getting so crazy off topic. Uh, like of ever? Ever. Oh, Macho Man Randy, Randy Savage. Savage? That's one of my answers, totally. I, I mean, I don't true. like wrestling, so Macho Man Randy Savage I think Hollywood 100%. Hogan, even though he's kind of he, a uh, racist, they're all a little bit racist, but I think... Uh, especially you know, at that point, yeah, yeah. that was... This is the 80s. People were doing a lot of coke. Yeah. Although when this happened, it wasn't the 80s, obviously. Yeah. But you know how Hulk Hogan calls everyone brother? Yeah. Come Do you on, think brother. for a time in private, he replaced brother with another word with a similar ending to it? Yeah. It's very mother? possible. Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Hulkamania is coming at you, mother. 
<laughs> That's what he says when he's calling his mom, like, I'm going to visit. Like, uh, this upcoming Mother's Day, yeah. He's got his bandana on. This is going to be the most derailed podcast It's like the that one we've guy also, by the way, in the modern age when it's like, if you're balding, it's cool to just shave your head. Hulk Hogan just won't do it. No. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, nope, I'm going to grow out what it's I It's because have. his... The hair that he does have is like, it looks like the softest stuff in the world. It looks, yeah, it looks like the like hair you find silk. on one of those dolls that pisses itself. You know, that what? kids get, you know, when you have to change its fake diaper. Yeah, that sounds like a blast. Yeah. Which, why do people want those dolls? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because right? pretty they much all of the toys that they make for girls are training. Training, yeah, Yeah, exactly. let's give them an, a fake oven yeah. and a baby. Yeah. They'll know what to do. They won't they won't try to threaten our way of life. The patriarchy remains. Yeah. Okay, so moving Sexist on. Sexist toy makers. I think we should move on now to number four on this That's list. That's probably the best idea. Number four, troubling news coming out of the new Suicide Squad film. After the release of the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer, many fans of the trailer were excited about how funny the film looked. After hearing all the positive feedback for the trailer, Warner Brothers realized that the problem's on hand because it turns out all the jokes in the film were in that one trailer. So now as damage control, they're spending over $10 million <laughs> in reshoots to make the film more fun. This is not good. <laughs> yeah. uh, in a lot of other in a lot of other th- like panels and things, the word fun is being thrown around a lot in regards to them moving forward with the DC movie universe thing. Um, so I'm kind of getting this vibe that maybe after Batman v Superman immediately tanked I mean, it's going to make us money, but... 69% drop-off at the box office in yeah. the second yeah. week. So, here is... And again, I have not seen uh, Batman v Superman yeah. or, ba- or Roe v. Ro v. Wade, the movie. But uh, <laughs> what I will say about this is, from what I've heard from everyone, again, I can't judge it, but it seems pre- really self-serious. Marvel has done a pretty good job of subverting that. And getting some, you know, making the tone light at times, and it makes it feel like less of a less of a slog when it's longer. I don't think there is a single joke in Batman v Superman. No, not one. There's not even a funny situation. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. So. Well, there's only one joke in it, but it was more like a "oh damn" kind of moment. It's whenever yeah. Bruce Wayne tells uh, Clark Kent, uh, "We've had a real problem in Gotham with freaks dressed like clowns." I think that's the only that's as close to a joke as that movie ever got. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's very dark and grim and self serious and it fucking falls flat. Which works for Batman. It, like, I mean, you saw that with the yeah, with the Christopher Nolan trilogy, but it wasn't a bad thing there. Uh but yeah, I just also though, you know It just those didn't handle itself. Were pretty well. well written and this one, from what I've heard, isn't again I haven't seen it, but I think it would do well for them to make a lighter tone prevalent at least parts of their movies. But I don't think going back and and inserting stuff in and reshooting stuff is probably the way to go. Well, considering that everything I've read so far, uh, in terms of like people talking about the newer movies, they've inserted the word fun like two or three times in a yeah. sentence. It's like they're really trying to be like, yeah, don't worry. We're going to make the don't next worry, one fun. Guys, this is going to be a riot. Uh, the I'm not terribly surprised that Suicide Squad's having an issue like this. Nah. Um, I really want this movie to be good. I would love for this movie to be good. I know it's not going to be, though. Nope. Was I, this the one with Will Smith on it? Will yes. Smith and... Margot Robbie. And 30 Jared Leto. <laughs> They're just the whole band. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so number five on the news item, the final news item of the week, there's an American remake of The Untouchables being made, and they may have found their two lead cast members in Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart. So weird. I have don't... you seen The Untouchables? Yeah. God fucking damn, that movie's like one of the most emotional rides yeah, I've ever taken. Just, does this strike you as strange casting? No, all? I am totally okay with this because... I'll give it a shot. I am always excited whenever I see a comedic actor, especially one like Kevin Hart, yeah. trying to take on a serious role like well, this. Well, it it almost almost uniformly works. That's yeah. what's crazy about it. I get, They um, say comedy is a really hard thing to perform, 
Yeah. Uh, and it's translated. I mean, Adam Sandler, who's like the dregs of the earth, has been really good in a couple of serious roles. Punch Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love and Spanglish were the two that came to mind. Yeah. I think he's done other ones, though. There was an emotional, like, serious role in Click that was really yeah, good. I never saw that. It was he, good. Uh, he actually cried a lot in that he's movie. He's in that one thing, the Adam Sandler, Kevin James, David Spade, Friend pool party movie or whatever. I don't think that's serious, though. Old uh, fucks. <laughs> <laughs> that, might, that might as well be what it's called. <laughs> Old fucks. <laughs> hey, are you tired of all these new fucks? <laughs> well, Come we check out Old have Fucks. We got a product for you. But yeah, so for those of you who don't know what the Untouchables is about, is uh, would are you getting another drink? I'm still on this Okay. Uh, I'll take root beer. Actually, I think I um, need some sugar. So, if you don't know what the Untouchables is about, is it's a French movie where a man who's paralyzed from the neck down, right? Yeah. I didn't know, like, because he could eat. He could he, eat. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he was paralyzed from the neck down. And he needed a caretaker. He was a very, very wealthy man. So he hired this uh, black gentleman who was from like the desolate streets of France, which kind of is a weird thing to say. It is. I mean, I guess it exists. Yeah. But uh, he hires this guy who's down on his luck to be his caretaker. And at first, the guy's like, I think his name's Omar Sy in real life. He was in Jurassic World. He was the black guy in Jurassic World who uh, was helping Chris <laughs> Pratt take care of the raptors. You know, the black guy that was in Jurassic World. There weren't a lot of them. No. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he hires him and they both change each other's lives because um, Omar Sy's character shows the cripple guy that you can still have an amazing, beautiful life. There's so much out there to discover. Right. And then the cripple guy shows Omar Sy's character there's so much you can experience um, by from, being paralyzed? No, because he shows them like, um, you've lived like on the streets and all you've seen is darkness and stuff. Look at all this beauty that surrounds you. You can be happy. Mm. And it's such an emo emotional roller coaster. I love that movie so much. Brian Cranston's perfect for that. Yeah, role. I'm, I, uh, I think he'll be good. Kevin Hart, um, I'm very interested. I'm interested. The jury's, you know, and he's a guy who I really like as a guy. Like yeah. the interviews I've seen and things like that. I've never really, I haven't, I haven't liked his stand up or his movies. But I, I'm I, a Kevin Hart apologist. I do think he seems like a really cool guy, and I think he'll do a good job. I'm ready I, to I give it a shot. I'm rooting for him to give, do a good job. Also, I just realized in our discussion of Jurassic World that the the Oscar boycotters may have had a point. Because it's like way easier for dinosaurs to get movie roles than black people, and that's kind of a problem. <laughs> well, yeah, like way you don't more add, dinosaurs. You don't add black people in in post with CGI. Yeah, I mean you could. That you actually have to pay them. But and then they're not. <laughs> you, wait, are you trying to tell me those dinosaurs were fake? <laughs> what? Well, okay. I'm trying to tell you they my, weren't paid. I want my nine fifty back. So I looked it up because you guys know we did the top 100 movies of all time a couple months ago. Yeah, on on, e on YouTube. E W E T U B E. It's a sheet a sheet e video. YouTube. <gasps> a sheet video hub. Yes. Yeah. I love that pun. I yeah. love everything about it. It's great. <laughs> uh, just go there, watch any video about sheep you want. Uh, steer clear of the adult section. Yeah. There, it's all from so Scotland. So <laughs> I had to look it up because I couldn't remember. The Untouchables is number 50. On our top 100 and movies of all time. 50. Yes, right there. It's right in front of James Bond's saga, like the entire series. Just rolled them up into one, you know. Into one neat bundle. And it was right behind Boogie Nights. I love Boogie Nights. Yeah. I love Boogie In at Night. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the top news. I'm, I think out of all those, I'm the most excited. Uh, maybe number five, followed very closely by number one. I'm the pretty, Batman pretty Telltale. I'm pretty excited about, uh, yeah, I, I'm probably, the, yeah, I'm with you on that, I think. Okay. Although Blade Runner 2 will have me in its theater. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just so everybody knows, a couple of things we need to announce. We have a store. If you head over to shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash flick freaks, you can find t-shirts, coffee mugs, phone, tablet cases, all the great paraphernalia. And we just opened up a Displate account where you can buy posters now. 
Posters. We got some posters out there. I think we only have one right now. But if you had to display it and you type in Flick Freaks, you can find it. We have metal posters. The only, That's pretty cool. The only poster we have right now, though, is like, uh, it's a little bit weird. It's a. It's just a poster of Jareth and Joseph's uh, amazing Technicolor dream coat and nothing else. That's so really you guys close are, to what your shirt is, actually. If you guys are into that. Perpetual Wizard. Have you seen the Perpetual Wizard shirt? Wait, what? The, he has a Perpetual Wizard shirt? Yeah, there's going to be a shirt of me. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, doesn't it? And apparently soon there will be a stained glass version of me as well. So. Well, yeah, so people can worship at your altar. Like, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I went through all the trouble before the the recent joining of all these podcasts to can, scour my identity. Here's an artist off the rendering internet. of the Perpetual can Wizard. We please, shirt. I have another request. <laughs> Hold on, I have to look at this. Oh my god, that's amazing! Yeah, I'm going to be buying that shirt. Yeah, I I will gladly have that. Can we get another Jareth shirt made? And the request on this one is to have like a, uh, you know, the cover of Face Off. With uh, Travolta and Cage? Yeah, so I want that to be uh, uh, Spacey and Cusack split straight down the Space middle. Space off? Or- well, no, I mean, because those are the two people that Jareth kind of tangentially looks like that uh-huh. got him the wrong half of Hollywood nickname. Speaking of people we could do I that. apparently look like, yeah. uh, yesterday a customer told me I look like Chumley from Pawn Stars. I don't know who that is. I don't He's want to hold on. an awful person. I'm, I have to get on the internet again for this. In an awful if show. If we had a third person... Um, I have another really a important fourth. question. Uh, how do you spell Chumley? I think it's just type, just type in Pawn Stars. Oh, I so, spelled it wrong. He's right? also like so really the, uh, heavy set, so I'm like, well, time for me to start working out. Aww. Yeah, so, you don't look like that guy. That guy looks like he's of uh, Hispanic descent, and he weighs 150 pounds more than you. Uh, see? <laughs> so the other thing is uh, Riff TV forward slash Flick Freaks. If you head over there... Riff.tv, I should say. Riff.tv forward slash Flick Freaks. We do reactions to Netflix shows. And tomorrow, I think everybody in this room is going to be here. Is that right? I will not be, unfortunately. Oh, you won't be. Which okay. I am very saddened about. Because there's no way you can make it? I do, there isn't, unfortunately. <sighs> and I have probably seen Big Trouble in Little China, I don't know, 20 times? <laughs> 20 times too few. Time to make exactly. it. Exactly. I make have 21. a great depth of knowledge about that fucking crazy movie the movie which is fucking crazy is probably one of my all-time favorite uh i guess what people would call a guilty pleasure movie although yeah. i feel no guilt from it no <laughs> not at all do you feel guilt no okay uh and apparently there's only one woman in the entire history of the planet that's chinese and has had green eyes is that a real thing, or is that just within the context of the... Context of the movie. The movie's universe. Okay, because I was like, that doesn't sound right. It didn't sound right, but I mean, you don't see certain eye colors on certain ethnicities. No, that's the whole thing in the movie, is yeah. she's the only one that has had green eye, jade yeah. eyes. And that's why they kidnap her, and that's why Kurt There's Russell no. has to go save her. It's to this day while I why I warn people with green eyes about Lopan. Yes. It's, <laughs> I mean, he's a problem. For for everyone out there, Jareth, I'm, on the subject of you being called that Pawn Stars guy, I was fairly recently in one of my more unkempt states, referred to at work as Zach Galifianakis, who is not at all, uh, who again probably weighs a hundred pounds more than me and is. I don't know, maybe a foot shorter than me. He's also, yeah, no, you don't look like Zach yeah, Galifianakis. It's just, but it's the same kind of thing. It's like lazy characterization. It's like I have a beard and at the time like long hair. Uh, that's lazy. Speaking, Come up with a better one. Speaking of Zach Galifianakis, let's move on now to trailer talk. The Lego Movie. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Have to, is he in the Lego Movie? He's in the Lego Movie. That he's was gonna, really expert. Lego gone. Batman Movie. So yeah, he's gonna be playing the Joker. What? Yeah, so Lego Batman movie is going to be coming out next year. Uh, if you guys watch the Lego movie, you know that Will Arnett played Batman wonderfully. Phenomenally, yeah, he was great. So Angsty Batman, teenage angst Batman. Yeah, so this is going to be uh, directed by Chris McKay. He he directs like every single episode of Robot Chicken. Yeah. So, I, okay, I could definitely see it Yeah. with the way so, that that uh, trailer was handled. Exactly. So it's going to star Rosario Dawson as Bat... Or Batgirl, Barbara Gordon. I'm all You're gonna for have that. Will Arnett, Batman, Bruce Wayne, Ray Fiennes as Alfred, 
Mariah Carey as Mayor Marion. And then you're going to have uh, Michael Cera as Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Nightwing. I wonder what he was doing. And then uh, <laughs> Galifianakis as uh, the Joker. Yeah. And then we, we saw uh, Superman and Wonder Woman. I wonder if they're going to get... Uh, uh, who played Superman? Uh, Channing Tatum played Superman yeah. in the Lego movie. So I wonder if he's going to come back for that. I would imagine. Yeah, I would. That movie was fun. Yeah. And this movie looks great. It yeah, looks the trailer so looks fun. fucking hilarious. Looks I, I think Very fun. self-aware and fun. Fun, and I, fun, fun. Yeah, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> so the next... Uh, yeah, I'm totally on board for Lego Batman. Yeah. It looks great. Uh, next movie we're going to be talking about, probably the most intriguing movie we've seen, Swiss Army Man. This intriguing movie intriguing is a nice way to put it. Yeah, I yeah. would say batshit crazy. I'm, I'm totally intrigued. Yeah, by this I'm movie. watching that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to see it. So it's a uh, stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Daniel Radcliffe, and Paul Dano. So what it's about it's uh, Paul Dano's character is like a castaway on an island somewhere. He's been He's given up, and then yeah. all of a sudden, this dead body washes on shore, and it's Daniel Radcliffe's body. And uh, he's like, I'm going to befriend this body because I don't have anybody to talk to. And then all of a sudden, the dead body starts talking back to him because he's going crazy. So and then they go on wild adventures. Is This is basically the There Will Be Blood Harry Potter mashup we've all wanted yeah. for all these years. Yes. And it's, what was that it's, movie with Paul Dano where... He writes into being a woman. What? Yeah, and it was really good. He He's a writer who had a really successful novel, can't write shit anymore, and he's lonely, and he writes into existence a woman who he falls in Ruby love with. Sparks. Oh, Ruby yes. Sparks, yeah. Anyway, okay. I thought that was a good movie. Writes into being a woman is probably not the way to have described that. <laughs> well, I was, I mean, that like, makes it sound like he became a woman by writing? That's, that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. He create I yeah. He writes about a woman and then she exists. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh I was thinking, are you talking about prisoners? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's a great movie though. It is a great movie. I think that was my favorite movie uh twenty thirteen. It so. might have been mine too. The amount of dread in that movie. It's nonstop dread. That's hands down Hugh Jackman's best performance ever. I agree. Hugh Jackman? Yeah, Hugh Jackman. Have and you never seen Prisoners? No. It was holy one, fuck. It's one of my favorite uh, Jake Gyllenhaal Let's see. Where's Prisoners on our top 100 movies of all time list? But Nightcrawler was the best Jake Gyllenhaal performance. Prisoners is number 18 on our top 18. 100 movies of all time. With one being the highest? One being the highest, yeah. Hot diggity daffodil. If you, bring, what, that what if you bring that flash drive... I'll give you the Lego movie and Prisoners. Speaking of movies yeah, watch you want back me to, to back. see, I need to give you back Memento and City of God, which I have still not watched. You watch them to... first and then give them back. I'm not going to be watching them anytime soon. Okay. You need to watch... I would recommend probably to watch the Lego movie first and get in a really good mood. Yeah. And then watch Prisoners. And then Prisoners. order a pizza. And you're, you're like, yeah, I'm going to... This is great. I'm having a relaxing day. And then watch Prisoners. And it'll be really... It'll make you feel What do you good. think's You'll more depressing? Dreams. Prisoners or City of God? City of God, probably. Yeah. I just hate watching well, movies in a by different myself. Way. And in a different really? Way. I yeah. love it. I do, too. Uh, That's the majority of all movies I watch. No. I mean, I go 95%. To the, I go to the movies by myself all I the time. Too. It's... The yeah. best. I don't mind going to see it with other people, but I don't see a single problem with going to the movies by myself. I was myself. worried people are going to try to talk to me. I'm like, movies are a group thing to me. Really? Yeah. Uh, I you do everything get else alone. But uh, yeah, Swiss <laughs> Army Man, I'm totally on board for this movie. It's, yeah. Whenever people say that Hollywood has run out of ideas, I look at movies like this and I'm like, uh-uh, Well, you look. just have to... It, it's the same thing with everything right now. Um, saying that we're out of ideas... Just means maybe it's harder to push a different idea through to the mainstream. Yeah. But you can find movies or bands or TV shows or whatever you want to find. Shit's out there. Shit's out there. You just maybe have to work a little bit harder. And I get that people don't have the time for it. Well, but also that's I, how I, we choose to spend our time to some degree. And it's fun. Yeah. I think that uh, the, you know, the everybody's out of ideas thing is is also a, a lot about mentality more it than is. it is. Yeah. Because it's, it's more about what are you willing to look look at and accept. Exactly. Uh, and I, I do understand. I completely understand people that are like, hey, you guys, 
Hollywood sucks now. You know, they're regurgitating the same stuff. Yeah, if you're just going off what the TV commercials you see are, that's completely true. Yeah. But if you go out of your way and just, I mean, a cursory 15-minute look about the internet, you'll find a movie you want to see. I, yeah. I can get the occasional bitch about it, but anybody who's like, you haven't made a good movie or a good band hasn't come out yeah. since 1985. Which isn't true. I mean, every year I do a list of my favorite 30 albums of the year, which I, no one listens to that much music. I mean, that's... <laughs> but, I mean, I there's so much stuff I like every year. Don't you, like, listen to each album, like, 17 times I or have to listen like to that? it 10 times for it to qualify 10 for times, evaluation. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Over the wow. course of a year. Yeah, it's very strenuous. I've read some of it. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's what I do when I'm working or doing stuff around the house. I'm always listening to music. Uh, but on the subject of movies, if you don't want to see Batman versus Superman, uh, don't, just don't see it. Yeah. Also, if you, know, you want to see it, just don't see it. <laughs> no, I still say go see it. But I guess that's it's my just point don't expect, is, like, don't expect the Nolan movies to it's Don't really frustrating. Expect a good movie. <laughs> it's really frustrating to see maybe the same movies making money, but if you don't like that, don't just give up on movies. Go throw some dollars the way of people making stuff you do like. Yeah. Okay, so the final trailer we're going to be talking about is Rogue One, a Star Wars mm. story. This is the first live action spin off movie we've ever had of Star Wars. Yeah. Thank you, Disney. So the movie stars Felicity Jones as Jen Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Which I swear is what she said. I, but it's Erso. Is, but Jen Asshole. What, where's she from? Who? What's she been in? Felicity Jones? Yeah. Oh, she was in like Theory of Everything. Do you remember that? She yeah, was, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, she, she had was, an imperial accent. Yeah. I'll say that. She was also in this movie called True Story, which was Yeah, with intriguing. James Franco. And- James Franco, yeah. Jonah Hill. And Jonah Hill, exactly. Uh, the movie also stars Mads Mikkelsen. Love that guy. Wait. Yes. Good. Alan Tudyk. Awesome. Awesome. Totally on that. Donnie Yen, Ip Man. You guys ever watch those movies? Never watched it. No. Ooh. I thought about it. They're, I've heard they're good. They're they're really good. They're not in our top 100. Probably top 200. I'd put the first one in for sure. We probably don't need a top 200 list. No, no, no. Or that's just we? way too much room. I've been although, thinking about undergoing although, a similar thing, but I haven't done it. I was really hard making a top 100, especially yeah. at that top. Like, oh, do I like this one more? Do I that's like this one? That's the daunting part because I keep thinking about doing that ever since since you did that, and I haven't I haven't yeah. done it because it sounds fun. I need to do that. I the can't also bring stars... 100 movies to mind at one time. Really? Probably like I've more. definitely seen a <laughs> hundred well, movies or more. What Leprechaun series have you seen? Because there's like seven of those. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've seen like five of them, but none of them make my top 100. <laughs> really? Yeah, me too. That's unfortunate. Yeah, because yeah, they're, they're really all bad. awful. They're so those movie, are guilty pleasure movies. Yeah. It also stars Ben Mendelsohn. Love that guy. He was really I, good at Bloodline. That's my favorite Ben Mendelsohn performance. Yeah. Uh, not so good in that movie with Nicolas Cage where they're trapped in the house. No. Uh, who's the, who Trespass. Ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn. Okay, so you saw The Dark Knight Rises, right? Yes. He was the whiny asshole who Bane was like, uh, uh, he put his hand on his shoulder like this and then he crushed his head off, off camera. He's uh, like, your plan didn't work. I don't own Wayne Enterprises right now. Oh, that motherfucker? Yeah. Dude, okay. he's really awesome. good in Bloodline. Yeah, he's awesome. I guess the second season of that will be next month. Yeah. Officially. And then the movie also stars Forrest Whitaker, Diego Luna, and the voice of James Earl Jones. It's a pretty good Darth cast. Vader's going to be in this. That's cool. Yeah, that's right. He is. Yeah. Following the, I, I again reiterate, really great casting from The Force Awakens. This is uh, seems like really, really good casting. So here's what really excites me. So the writing of this movie, not so much is what excites me. It's uh, Chris Wheats who wrote this. He gave us like about a boy Ooh. and movies like this. But the movie wasn't actually that bad. <laughs> this movie's directed by Gareth Edwards. Yeah. He gave us Monsters and Godzilla, the new Godzilla. I always go back to Monsters, which is a super underrated movie. Yeah, the movie's amazing. Which one's Monsters? Monsters is a sci-fi uh, f- human film, Pretty really. Pretty bare-bones sci-fi. Yeah, movie. it's it yeah. takes place in a sci-fi universe like where aliens invaded, there's giant <gasps> octopus oh, monsters. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. But and it's they, all about the people. Yeah, and they're... 
he's trying to get like the daughter her, of his boss. Yeah, get her through the the contamination zone. Yeah, that movie was really good. Really I good. found it on accident too. Yeah, so he directed that. That was his first film, and they're like, "You're great." Here is Godzilla, and I think he did a phenomenal job with Godzilla. I didn't know yeah. that he did Godzilla. Yeah. Again, I come here for my news. You never saw Godzilla, didn't I lend that? I did, yeah. Okay, I was like, I swear I lent that to you for like yeah. eight months for you to watch. That's how most things get lent to me. <laughs> yeah. For very, And then randomly, I'm just like, hey, I'm going to watch this now. The worst part is, I have things to watch, but when it's when I've borrowed it and it's sitting right there, I'm like, well, I could watch that kind of whenever. Whenever, whenever I, yeah. I end up watching about 800 movies before I watch the thing that I should just watch. So this looks like a very different Star Wars movie than what we've ever got. It kind of looks like Hunger Games, the Star yeah. Wars film. Uh, how so? For the simple fact that you have a young heroine rebelling against the government and the government's all wearing white and uh, there's well, going to be a love interest between her and Diego Luna. Well, to be fair, that government's always been wearing white. The yeah. fact that it's a female now doesn't really change that they're rebelling. But at the very end, she looked like she had a quiver on her back, and she looked a lot like Jennifer Lawrence in Hunger Games. And, uh, like, Elizabeth Banks has that big thing on her head. And then Forrest Whitaker's going to be playing the... <laughs> is she even in this movie? No. no. <laughs> okay. But Forrest Whitaker is going to be, like, the Hamish role, you know, where he's, like, the guide to her, the Woody Harrelson role. So here's the thing I have a problem with about Hunger Games is that I don't know. I watched the first one. I thought it was... Eh, uh, I've heard the second one's really good. Second one's better than the first one. Yeah, the, I, the other two are just garbage fires. I probably just shouldn't even watch another one then. No, no, it's the second one's not worth like due to really yeah, make it's, it's like because if I watch that, better. I have to watch all the rest of them. You don't have to. Yeah, but I don't have to even go that far though. No, you don't even have to watch. So the I probably one. shouldn't. Okay, just okay. You saw the first Hunger Games movie. Yeah, just imagine it being a little bit better. That's the second movie. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. But people were like super crazy about it. Yeah. Like they were mm -hmm. like, OMG, Hunger Games. Yeah. LOL. I saw every <laughs> single Hunger Games That's movie. That's exactly what they were like. Yeah. So, yeah. Out of all of these movies on this list, and it's actually really hard for me to decide which one I'm the most excited yeah, I, for. Am I, I excited can... for a very unique movie? Am I excited for a movie that looks really fun? Or am I excited for a Star Wars movie? I I'm think gonna I'm going to cast my movies. lot with uh, Swiss Army Man. I am too, but I'm going to watch all of them. Oh, yeah. No, this this is a good good string of trailers here. I want Swiss I'm, I'm Army Man to be one of those movies, I mean, who knows if it will be, where I leave it and think about it for a couple of days. Yeah. And, I think know, there's a good chance. I'm hoping. I mean... I will say this, though. I was There was a movie that came out a while ago. I'm like, okay, now you can't tell me Hollywood has run out of ideas. The movie was called The Lobster. I never oh, did yeah. see that. I wanted you know. to see that. Never but did. I did see Killer. It was Joe. really disappointing. <laughs> it was? Yeah. The acting was great. It's just, it was too abstract and out there for it to be entertaining. And Damn. I was really disappointed. Well, hopefully this won't have that issue. Yeah. So now it's time to move on to the final segment of the podcast. So if you're not familiar with what we've been doing the last couple of weeks and what we've done over the past couple of years. Then go to hell. Wait, the, no. <laughs> The Flick Freaks March Madness Series Edition 2016, where we took 64 of the top currently running or just finished shows. 64. And we had them go against each other in a March Madness style bracket. Sorry, real quick. Him saying, then go to hell, reminded me of the fucking uh, Talladega Nights. Oh, I'm yeah. Ricky Bobby, and if you don't chew big red, go, then yeah. fuck so, you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, that was on the outtakes at the end, wasn't it? I no, think I think it was I actually, it's actually in, the in the middle. Was it actually? Yeah. In the middle? But I would because he that was talking about Jim Bean sausage and stuff like that. that Jackhawk nine thousand. Jackhawk. That movie has some uh, really good parts in it. I, I think the crap is like my the favorite whole movie. Yeah. Oh, you'd like this. So the other day I was watching, uh, uh, like you know how they have like snippets of movies, and I never seen this movie, and I know it's your favorite movie of all time. Uh, Hot Rod. Yep. So I'd never seen the movie, and they just had a scene in it. I'm like, okay, I need to see this movie now. It's where Andy Samberg fights his dad. At the yep. Okay. I'm like, okay, this movie looks great. Now I need to go and see it. <laughs> He's fucking amazing. I've never seen that movie. So yeah, I, I need to check it out. I love that movie. It's my so favorite. We had 64 shows. That's a lot of shows. Yeah. 
this is the top 16. After this, we're going to be down to the Elite Eight. Uh, real quick, I would just like to comment on the two movies that I know Jareth really, really likes a lot are Hot Rod and Event Horizon. <laughs> Event Horizon is really good. That's the strangest combination of Actually, my I'm top assuming. two favorite movies of all time, Hot Rod's number one. Second one is Breakfast at Tiffany's. All right. Interesting. What about that song, Breakfast at Tiffany's? Eh. Take it or leave it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so here's who is going up against each other. Daredevil, which was your number one seed, yep. was going up against Making a Murderer. The Flash was going up against Game of Thrones. One Punch Man, which was my number one seed. Yeah. Hey, what was my number one seed? I don't think I seeded Fargo. Mine. Oh, was Fargo, that my Fargo one you say was your number Did one? Did I say that? Yeah, and then you I said just, every other one was just. I sent in you there. a text message at like three in the morning with seventy eight TV shows on it. No, you said Fargo was short. number one, and then every other one just pick. Put it wherever. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, okay, I'm okay with having done that. Okay, so yeah, my number one was One Punch Man. It was going up against Keen Peel, and then South Park was going up against Vikings, and then Better Call Saul, which beat out Michael's number one seed. Uh, Expanse. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Better Call Saul was going up against Archer. Good. Suck it, Mike. Yeah, Better Call Saul's awesome. And then <laughs> Rick and Morty was going up against The Walking Dead. All right. I hope it wins. I do want and to then, see more of The Expanse, though. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. It's on a DVD at Walmart now for, I think, 10 bucks. For real? Yeah. Digital video disc? Yeah. Dub then, video dub. And then Fargo, <laughs> which was your number one seed, yeah. was going up against another one of your seeds. Oh my god. Silicon Valley. It's a win win for Brian. And then the final one, Mr. Robot going up against Jessica Jones. Mm. Hesicahones. Hesicahones, correct. So I'm gonna mm. go up up, up against these, these shows. And I'm gonna have you guys pick which one you think won. Not which one you want to win. Can which I one add you in which won. one I want to win? Yeah. Okay, I almost so, won this game last time. Okay, You did. And then almost. you gave it away right I at the did. end. I did. I decided I was going to be stupid. Now, keep in mind, everybody listening, these are not the series as a whole. We're only using the, the last... Most recent season. The last fully completed yeah. season, except for some like The Walking Dead, which just finished. I mean, they were like when we started this. Two when we started. Out yeah. Or something. So yeah. it's going to be like... And The Flash even. Or uh, what, what was I thinking of? South Park ended while we were doing this. Yeah. And um, what was another one? Archer ended while... No, it didn't. It just started. Yeah, Latest season started. of Archer was really good. Yeah. I still haven't seen it. So it's the last it's fully completed season that we're going off of. So... Oh, Daredevil. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, Not okay. season two. It was season, season one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Season two is really good, It's though. really good, so... But season, so is season one. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait and talk to you guys about this later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I have not. Com- I have not finished season two of Daredevil okay, then yet. I won't. Okay. So <laughs> I we have Daredevil going like up against night. Making a Murderer. Which one do you think won? I'm gonna go with oh, shit. Um, That's the toughest one to pick. Fuck. Uh, I haven't seen Making a Murderer, but everybody's like yanking it to it. Yeah. So it's really fucking good. <sighs> Fuck it. I'm gonna go with Making a Murderer. I'm gonna vote against myself. I'm going to vote against my better judgment. I'm going to assume Daredevil. Uh, Although, Making a Murderer was such a sensation. And as far as which one I would pick, um, I don't know. I enjoyed both of those greatly. I think Daredevil's probably the better show. Yeah, it's not really the same thing, which is, it's hard to judge against each other. In a 70-30 win... Oh my! Daredevil won. Damn it! Take I that, Jared. You should have. You should have pulled one out. Is still in. You should have pulled out your BlackBerry and checked it and gone to BlackBerry. That would have biz. That would have taken ten years. The- <laughs> yeah. So now we have the Flash going up against Game of Thrones. All right. I'm gonna go with the Flash. That won. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I haven't seen the Flash. I've only seen Game of Thrones. And uh, I am going to also say that the Flash won. I don't know why. Flash did win. Man, I haven't that w- seen we any had, of the Flash. So we by had the way. two shows, or we had two uh, matches go against each other, yeah. where we had to go to Twitter because and do a poll because they were so tied. Twitter. So they were tied on YouTube, but when we no. went to Twitter, I think it was eighty percent for the Flash and then twenty percent for Game of Thrones. Yeah. So Game of Thrones is out. I was really it's surprised done. by that. I'm not. 
Oh man, I, I'm not too surprised. No, one, no one liked the last season. I've been out since like the second season. Yeah. yeah, I've continued to watch it. I think it's fine for what it is. It's just I I have to think of it as a separate entity. I know? even as a separate entity, I just kind of stopped caring. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on now. We had One Punch Man, which was my number one seed, going up against Keen Peel. Okay, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Keen Peel. This is one of those ones where I don't feel qualified to judge them myself, so I'll pass on my opinion because I've seen some Key and Peel, I've seen no One Punch Man, and I will. S- uh, I'm going to say One Punch Man um, to try and separate myself in the standings from Jareth further. Yeah. So in a seventy-five to twenty-five win, it was pretty unanimous. Okay, One Punch Man, <laughs> Jareth. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gone. So I'm, I'm gone down. for a month, and I come back and I beat you at something again. Yeah, yep. this is just like IMDb idiots. So have you yeah. got every single one right so far? Yeah. Okay, so you're three zero. You're one and two. Yeah, Ooh. I'm not doing very good at this. All right, so now we have South One Punch Man. You have to check that show out. I think I have it. He it's on Hulu. Totally uh, legally. He tied me down wondering. and made me watch the first episode. It was actually really funny. Did he then punch you? <laughs> The first episode is just setting up the universe so you understand yeah, everything. Really like the first After that, that's when it gets fucking hilarious. So now we have South Park going up against Vikings. Vikings? Vikings, okay. <sighs> yeah, Vikings. In a 55-45, oh my it God. won by one vote? South Park. God, balls on a biscuit. Ugh. No, I take that back. It won by two votes. But still, close. Now I feel better. Close. Yeah. Uh, Feel way better. (laughs) All right. So now we have your number one C. No, no. No, it was. Oh. No, no. Better Call Saul. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Probably. Okay. This is the one that beat out Michael's number one seed. Better Call Saul going up against Archer. I'm going to go with Better Call Saul. I would go with Better Call Saul, (laughs) but I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that Archer won. Okay. So, in a 50-50 win on YouTube... Wait, so it was tied? It was tied on YouTube. Then we went to Twitter. So, neither one of us is really wrong. (laughs) So, it tied on YouTube. And then, on Twitter, it was 50-50. And then, remember I said there was one person that voted in at the very last... I think it was in, like, the last seven minutes. It was an upset. No. Archer won. Dicks. Oh, the by lead one? widens. Yeah. By a bucket of dicks. But I mean, you, I better call Saul so good. I haven't seen a single episode yet. You should I've, definitely uh, be doing it. I know. I, everybody says it's the best show on TV right now. It's Apparently my, they're wrong because my, they just lost in the Sweet it's 16. It's probably my second favorite show on TV right now. Really? To Fargo. Um, Interesting. It's my favorite show on TV right now. Okay, so right. next and up Desperate we had... Wives of Missouri. <laughs> yes. Are you... Please tell me that's real. I wish it was. Yeah. So now we have Rick and Morty going up against The Walking Dead. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. In a 80-20 win. The Walking Dead. Really? I thought, the, I thought the backlash on that, on Walking Dead, would be in full effect. I just want Rick and Morty to be more better. Because like, it was season is. five, and it was season five of The Walking Dead where they finally get to uh uh, our what's the name of that town? Not Terminus. Alexandria. It started, yeah, Alexandria. It started off in Terminus. You know, yeah. they fuck with the wrong people, and then they get to Alexandria. No, no, no. He doesn't say fucking Andrew. He says no, they screwed, screwed, which again, well, I will never not be mad about. Yeah, it's AMC. They can't say fuck. Yeah, you can. You get well, one per well, season or something. One per season. I thought it was one per series. Uh, I don't know because there were like Better Call breaking, Saul's already had more than one. In Breaking Bad, they they got rid of it in the first episode. Fuck you and your eyebrows. Yeah, and then which is <laughs> so great. Yeah, and well, then again at the end, of course, you know. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. uh, Asax Trader, and you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. So, um, oh, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, The Walking Dead. Yeah, it, pretty unanimous one. So now moving on, we have two matches left. Coming up next, your number one seed, Fargo, going up yeah. against Silicon Valley, which was another one of your choices. It was. I'm going to vote Fargo. I, I mean, am, I've, I've lost. I'm also point. going to do that. It was another 80 20 win, Fargo won. Yeah. Good job, Fargo. So, the last match in the Sweet proud. 16 
we had Mr. Robot going up against Hesica Hones. Mr. Robot. Mr. I Robot. still haven't watched Mr. Robot, and I have the first season. Uh, Jessica Jones was awesome. Um, I already have a lead anyway, so what the hell? Jessica Jones. <laughs> In an 85-15 oh win. It was like so fucking unanimous. Yeah. Mr. Robot won. Yeah. I just I still lose. Yeah. But... Mr. Robot, it won Golden Globe Best Series. Yeah. And it's probably and still one of the most... It. It's my USA Network bias is the problem here. Dude, I need this to get will... off that and just watch it. What I'm not going to watch is that Colony show with fucking Sawyer on it. And, it's uh, not that great. Yeah, I watched one episode of it, and it seemed stupid. Yeah. What? I like Sawyer. Yeah. I like the Lost a lot. Lost but uh, yeah, I just wish that show was better. And also, uh, Taub from House is in it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lori from The Walking Lori Dead. Lori from Walking Dead, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, going up in the Elite Eight, we're going to have Daredevil going up against The Flash, which I think is, you know, match. Yeah. You Super can do it, Central. Daredevil. You can do this. And Everybody have- listening, vote for Daredevil. Only Daredevil. Yeah. yeah. And then we have specifically one- for Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> so then we have One Punch Man going up against South Park. Mm. Then Archer up against The Walking Dead. Okay. And then Fargo up against Mr. Robot, which I think that's going to be really fucking yeah, close. That'll be good. I need to watch Mr. Robot soon so that I can make a judgment call on this. Do you have pre- do you have predictions which do you think is going to win between Daredevil and the Flash? I'm hoping Daredevil. I think Daredevil will I think win that one. Be Daredevil, surely. And then One Punch Man against South Park. I don't know. I'm surprised South Park made it this far. Me too, actually. I think One Punch Man's going to win. I Fingers really crossed. Do. Yeah. Not because it's my number one seed. I think people, especially the internet, is so in love with One Punch Man for good reason. The internet. Yeah. And then Archer against The Walking Dead. Unfortunately, I think The Walking Dead. Well, I guess win. so. You know. It, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then Fargo, Mister Robot. I have no fucking idea. That's just know. up in the air. Both won convincingly in the last round. Yeah. I'm surprised Jessica Jones didn't put up a better fight. I know Jessica Jones, my favorite Marvel thing that exists so far. Well, you know what? Jessica Jones has consistently been being put up against really hard seeds. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Is this the time for me to say I'd put her up against my hard seed, or is that go for it? There. Okay, I said it. I'd do it too. Yeah. And that's where we're gonna wrap it up, guys. This was episode seventy three. It started off as a huge garbage fire train wreck, bringing and her back around to the train wreck. But yeah. I think it kind of wrapped up kind of nicely in the end. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> so, Jareth, you have a spoiler cast, which you're recording tomorrow night. Yep. You're doing Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. Yep. Unfortunately. I, can't, I bet you're excited to talk about that again. I actually am. Yeah. I want to convert as many people <laughs> away from it as possible. I'm on a fucking crusade. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. and Brian, you have I Backup have... Catcher and Slow Descent. Yeah, so the Backup Catcher we just recorded yesterday. Uh, that's Your our, baseball's going baseball. on right now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, baseball's going on. And that's what we talk about, unsurprisingly. Yeah. Uh, so the Backup Catcher podcast, and then also the Slow Descent podcast, where uh, I talk about pop culture stuff uh, and Clint Eastwood movies with apes and wrestling. So if you like any of Together, that, like a mashup? Sometimes, or? yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Planet of the a, WrestleMania. Technically, it's an orangutan. Some but. of those, yeah, that's true. It's It's a greater ape, right? Um, is it, yeah, oh yeah, because there's only one ape that's a lesser ape. Yeah, man. <laughs> Wait, which ape is a lesser ape? Uh, is it Grape Ape? No, that's the best ape. Okay, it's a, he's the grape greatest ape. Is ape? In his own category up above everything else. Oh, look just up, like what Foghorn was the Leghorn ape? is the best bird. <laughs> Have you never seen Every Which Way But Loose, where Clint Eastwood teams up with an orangutan? Because if you oh. haven't, uh, you probably should. I've seen it. Oh, yeah, forever ago. Okay, uh, yeah. so lesser ape. Yeah, this is, before we go, this is really important information people should hear. A gibbon. The gibbon the is gibbon. the only lesser ape. This the Every other one is called a greater ape. Rude. Yeah. Why not just normal ape and he, the gibbon's just a shitty ape? I don't what know. What the fuck? But uh, <laughs> yeah, you can find us on... Twitter, Twitch, I don't know why after this podcast you would. You can find us on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Displate, 
Instagram, Spreadshirt, Patreon, you Rift can TV. Find us in your dreams. Well, we need we're to always get, there. We need to get in MySpace. We need you to write some uh, music for Flick I Freak so that. we can make a MySpace account. I have a plethora of really weird. Uh, MySpace exists. It's the only music now. That's mm. pretty much all it was before. Yeah. Well, yeah, but don't people? I just mean, use that like, and online predators, and SoundCloud yep. and stuff. Online and Tom. Like, oh, you already said online predators. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I see what you did there. You know, because kids. Yeah. All right. We will catch you in the next episode. Until then, thank you for listening and Godspeed. Bye. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.